Good morning, good evening, good afternoon to everyone. God bless you all. Hey, Eti brother. Yeah, let's all just uh, please share the room. Uh, we will discuss about uh, Muta Nika or what is Nika Muta. Uh, we will give a couple of references and uh, we will talk about how uh, Nikamutta is still allowed in Islam based on Surah 4 verse 24. Uh, I believe some of our friends, they will join in. Hey, Brother Namor, how are you doing? Hey, Nazarene. I'm in the midst of giving you, uh, uh, one of my students a chess lesson, so I will be just listening. Okay, bro. And I'll just let you guys do your thing, and I'll just listen. Sure, sure. No problem, no problem. So, yeah, we're, we're going to have a discussion on what is muta nikah, or what is nikah muta. Um, because usually the Muslims come up and say that, oh, we are we are Sunnis, and that we don't have nikah muta, or um, having nikah for pleasure. Uh, but it is still there. It is still available in islam and it is still actively practiced in islam uh, by the shias and the sunnis in one way or the other so we will give all the references we will walk one by one as to you know what exactly is nikamuta what is the worst that is prevailing everything else whatever muhammad said whatever umar said and all of that so basically the you know, uh, those who have recently joined in, please share the room so that more people can join in. Um, I believe more brothers and sisters will join in uh, and we will have a good discussion. Uh, the the topic, uh, Nika Muta, the, the main verse that is focusing this particular uh, situation is Surah 4, verse 24, um, which gives a Muslim the right to um, to molest and rape um, you know the the captives of Christians Hindus and you know any other believers you know any other faith systems and also it gives Muslims the right to have sexual intercourse uh, with women and pay them money so uh, you know if you read Surah 4 verse 24 you can see that also prohibited are women already married except those whom your right hand possess so the right hand possess are the ones whom the muslims capture in a war like you know if they go and attack somebody they capture these women and then you know even though their husbands are still alive they can rape these women so that is the verse that is giving clear instructions for muslims to rape in a non-Muslim women's. So it says like this, also prohibited are women who are already married, except those whom your right hand possess. So the, if the right hand possess women, even though they are married, they are okay for you to have sexual intercourse with. Then it says, thus hath Allah ordained against you, except for these, all other are lawful, provided ye seek with gifts from your property desiring chastity not lust now the next portion is where we can see the nikka mutta that is going to happen the next portion says seeing that you deserve benefit from them give them their dower as prescribed but if after a dower is prescribed agreeing mutually there is no blame on you and allah is all knowing and wise so you know, you can pay the women, you can pay these women from your money after you have made a contract with them. The word that is used there is called as ishtamta tum. Ishtamta tum bihi means if you have enjoyed of it, of them, then give them their wages as agreed. If you have enjoyed their vaginas, what is you know, in Islam enjoying a woman's private part is, is specifically mentioned for paying off the, the money. 
so if you have enjoyed their vaginas then you can pay them their wages so the word that is used in surah 4 verse 24 is ishtam tatum this ishtam tatum is muta is when you have benefited when you have enjoyed the word muta actually it it there are the, there is a particular meaning for it you know what is muta actually means um so i'll give you the explanation for it it means that in some works a special term is applied to women who participate in muta or mustajara or rented woman muta is considered a kind of rental because in general a man's basic aim is in this kind of marriage is sexual enjoyment of the woman so in a way it is renting the woman so that you can enjoy their private part muslims are allowed to do that they are allowed to enjoy the private part of the women and then pay money for it yeah i'll give you the uh, the shia sources of where this muta is coming from where you know the um, complete explanation of where this muta is coming from so this is the source <coughs> that will give you a detailed explanation about the muta it will give you a detailed explanation of what muta is where is muta coming from and all of that so if you see the arabic word and the meaning it says like this in some works as a special term is applied to women who participate in muta or mustajara or rented woman muta is considered a kind of rental because in general a man's basic aim is in this kind of marriage is is to have sexual enjoyment of the woman and in return for his enjoyment the woman receives a certain the woman receives a certain amount of money or property so once the person has enjoyed the farjaha of the woman, then the person pays money. This is what Islam's um, muta is, or you know, giving, paying money, and then enjoying her private part, and then paying her for what you have agreed for. So this is, I have given you the link. If you want, you can you can save this in Shia islam they say it as uh, they say it as um, nikah muta in sunnis they say it as misiar nikah misiar so there are two different type of uh, nikahs for enjoyment misiar is also a type of enjoyment which our dear, our dear brother at has already mentioned um, where muslims are allowed to do prostitution in a legal way prostitution as in paying money having sexual intercourse with them for a certain period of time maybe it would be three days two days one day or maybe a day or an hour or two hours that's all and then they enjoy the private part of the women and then they have sexual intercourse with them so if there are um, you know Muslim brothers and sisters who are there they can always come up and refute us but we can give you more evidences which prove that Muslims are allowed to pay for sex I have given you the link so that you can you know get into that link you can save that link on what Nika Muta is I'll give you some more examples of how Muhammad and his followers Muhammad and his followers have uh, Muhammad and his followers have done nikamuta. I'll give you a couple of examples for this also. So look at um, uh, uh, okay. Where is this temporary nikamuta is coming from? Okay, this is from Sahih al Bukhari one four five six five one uh, Sahih al Bukhari four six one five. 4615 this is the reference of it you can save it and you can use that paying women for a temporary period of time 
and then having sexual intercourse with them. Sahil Bukhari 4615 narrated Abdullah, we used to participate in the holy war. So uh, Abdullah is saying that we used to participate in jihad carried out by prophet and we had no women with us. So these people, they did not have their women with them. The right hand possessed the slaves or their wives. They were not with them. So what happened is, so we said to the Prophet, shall we castrate ourselves? So they asked Muhammad, shall we cut off our, our um, private parts? Shall we cut it off? So Muhammad is saying that, uh, but the Prophet forbade us to do that and therefore he allowed us to marry a woman temporarily by giving her even a garment. So temporarily they are allowed to have nikah muta and allowed to give even a garment, a cloth so that they can have sexual intercourse with them. And then he recited, O oh, you who believe, do not make unlawful the good things which Allah has made lawful for you. Surah 5, verse 87. See, the moment people ask for sex, Muhammad is getting a wahi. Muhammad is getting an information from Allah that Surah 5, verse 87 is coming down that do not make it unlawful what good things which Allah has made lawful for you. You can save this reference also. Surah 587 is also an example of Nikah Mutta. Now what our Muslim brothers have to do or Muslim friends have to do is they have to bring in a source which is from the Quran which abrogate Nikah Mutta. You have to bring in a source which abrogates Nikah Mutta. There are no sources whatsoever. Okay, I will give you more references. This is one of the reference which is there. Now, let's go back to this particular word. Okay, in Arabic, when you read Surah 4, verse 24, it goes like this. Fama istam tatum bihi min hunna fatahunna ujruhunna farida. That's the word that is being used. When you have enjoyed their private parts, then you pay these women. The word istamtatum is the word for when you have found pleasure, when you have enjoyed their private parts, when you have benefited out of their private parts. Now the problem that we are um, asking our Muslim friends is why is it that you are Allah behaving like a pimp? Why is it that you are Allah allowing to pay money so that somebody can have sexual intercourse with them? Um, uh, why is your Allah allowing um, Muslim men so that they can have sexual intercourse with women by paying money? Surah 4 verse 24 is a clear word which gives Muslims the right to pay money and have sexual intercourse with them you know, with a, 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 you know, for a temporary period. So, Nika Mutta, the word Mutta is actually pleasure. You know, when you gain pleasure out of sex, out of, you know, having sexual intercourse with a woman, then you pay for it. Now, Muslims, what is the difference between um, a prostitution and what is the difference between nikah mutta? It's just the same. Your Allah is allowing for prostitution. Tell me if it is not. Your Allah is allowing for prostitution. So your Allah is the best pimp. He is the one who is a good pimp in this world and he is also a good pimp in the next he is a good pimp who allows for 72 huris so that you can have sexual intercourse with. In a day, a Muslim man will have sexual intercourse with 100, men, 100 women in the heaven. You can see the tafsirs and you can read it. You can find these sources. Okay, so Allah is, is acting as a good pimp and he is giving Muslims the authority to, to have sexual intercourse with these women by paying them. Even if it is a garment, even if it is a smallest of the item that is there with the man, 
then that man can pay and have sexual intercourse with them. Now I will give you some more sources. I have given you the Quranic source. I have given you the Shia sources which explains what exactly muta is and how they defend these muta. Okay. I'll, so I'll give you one more source from Tafsir al-Tabari about Surah 4 verse 24. This is in Tafsir al-Tabari, volume 6, page number 586. This is what it says. For Muhammad bin Umar, he said, for Abu Asim from from Abu Asim, from Isa, from Ibn Abi Nijim, from Mujahid, he said like this, So for whatever you have had the pleasure, Istam Tatum, with them, he said that means Nika Al Muta. So this is not a small person who is saying this. This is this is a giant. This is Tafsir al this is from the Tabari that he is giving this example from. So Tabari is giving us this example and Tabari is quoting this in Tafsir. So, you know, my, our dear brothers are here. Uh, Satya brother is here and gentle brother. Um, uh, brothers, do you have any, any thoughts on this particular, you know, um, pimping that Allah is allowing for Muslims? What are your thoughts? Is it a God? Can a God allow such kind of a thing that, you know, his believers can go and pay for sex for three days, two days, one day for an hour and then say that it is okay? Do you think he, it can this person, then this deity be a God? What are your thoughts about it, guys? Right. I'm quite sure that a God would not be able to do that. I'll give you an explanation on this as I read from islamqa.info. Mutha or temporary marriage refers to when a man marries a woman for a specific length of time in return for a particular amount of money. Mutha marriage was permitted at the beginning of Islam and they say it was abrogated later. But is it still in practice? Is a question that needs to be asked. So history of Mutha or the temporary marriage. There are basic principles concerning marriage that it should be uh, a temporary marriage. It was permitted and they say that it is not to be practiced now, Ali narrated that the messenger of Allah allowed Muta and later forbade it. And the meat of domestic donkeys at the time of Kaiba. According to another report, he forbade Muta marriage at the time of Kaiba. Kaiba na sametha matram adha forbade yidu. He forbade the meat of tame donkeys. Narrated by Al-Bukhari. Adha Kaiba na sametha adha paad illa yandha varanya. Adhita adha. General bro, we can keep it strictly as English. Oh, I'm sorry about it. I was just pondering through a few papers. I can share a couple of couple more links about uh, Nika Muta. Um, it is there in the chat box. You can save it. This is from Sahih Muslim 1404, 1404A. You can see the whole list. You can see a lot of references on that. All right. Would you please read 424? If you haven't already mentioned it, uh, Brother Nazreen. Which, which, uh, which hadith? Surah Al-Nisa 424. Yeah, yes, brother, I have actually read it and I'll, I'll read it again, no problem. So, um, because, the, because the main point is lying in Surah 4, verse 24. It says like this, 
I'll read it from uh, this is from the translation of Barakpuri. It says like this also forbidden are women already married except those slaves whom your right hand possess so we have discussed that this is the ayah which allah is allowing for rape raping the women who are captured by the muslims while their husbands were still alive the next portion is thus has allah ordained for you all others are lawful provided you seek them with their dowry from your property desiring chastity not fornication so with those among them whom you have enjoyed give them their required due but if you agree mutually to give more after the requirements has been determined there is no sin on you surely allah I, is ever knowing and yeah. all wise right i would like to focus on so with those of whom you have enjoyed sex give them their mahar as prescribed so this is not marriage because you have already enjoyed sex and you are paying them money according to surah an nisa which is the fourth chapter in quran and the 24th ayah listen carefully they say this verse indicates that muta is permissible of course it is permitted in the quran as per this verse and the word their mahar ujruhunna is literally their dues or their wages so if you give a woman her wage after sex you call it prostitution their dues and it is evident that what is meant by the phrase you have enjoyed sex is muta the refutation of this is in fact that prior to this allah mentions the woman whom a man is forbidden to marry then he mentions what is permissible for him and he commands the man to give to the woman what he marries her as mahar the joy of marriage is expressed here that's what they say by the word enjoyment enjoyment here refers to the enjoyment of sex okay in the hadith of abu huraira according to which the messenger of allah said a woman is like a bent rib if you try to straighten her you will break her if you want to enjoy her then enjoy her while she still has some crookedness in her al bukhari 4889 4889 and muslim sahih muslim 1468 two references i repeat what is mentioned there a woman is like a bent rib if you try to straighten her you will break her if you want to enjoy her then enjoy her while she still has while she still has some crookedness in her al bukhari 4889 muslim 1468 okay so you can enjoy a woman even if she is a uh, a uh, bu- uh, uh, curved rib o prophet verily we have made lawful to you your wives to whom you have paid their mahar given by husbands to his wife at the time of marriage this is in surah al ahzab 3350 so this means that muta is permissible according to quran there is not even a single verse in the quran that it says muta is no more practicable whereas according to 424 it is permitted ali narrated that ali narrated that he heard ibn abbas permitting muta marriage and he said wait a minute and he is trying to say it is forbidden 
Now, whether it is forbidden or whether it is permitted, I don't see any verse in the Quran which forbids, which forbade nikah muta. But I do have a verse in Quran which says muta is permitted. And of course, you know Allah knows the best. I wish he knows the best. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Gentle. Thank you. Uh, see, this is why we are saying that if Muslims say that um, muta or you know, um, legal prostitution in Islam, which Allah allows, it has been abrogated, then you have to bring in a source which says in the Quran itself that it has been abrogated. It has not been abrogated and we have given you n number of references. The, the major reference that is coming from this, the first source of Islam is Quran itself. And this is why the Shias are still practicing muta. They are still paying women and having uh, enjoying the pleasure of, of sex and then they are you know letting them go they are they are engaging in this temporary enjoyment the muta means enjoyment so they are engaging in this temporary enjoyment and they are paying women it is just as equal to prostitution we know that in what happens in prostitution is a man decide he goes to a brothel he decide which woman he wants to have a you know intimacy with and then he pays money uh, to the person who is the owner of that brothel or he pays money to the women and you know he enjoys it and then he goes they go different ways allah and muhammad being the best pimps they have allowed it and that's what they are doing over and over again now i will give you an example that muhammad and his sahabis they used to perform this thing on a regular basis sahih muslim 1404a 1404a it says like this we were on an expedition with allah's messenger and we had no women with us we said should we have should we not have ourselves castrated he the prophet forbade us to do so and he then granted us the permission that we should have temporary nikah temporary marriage for a stipulated period of time giving a garment so here you can see that how muhammad is allowing for a temporary nikah now i'll give you one more sahih muslim 1405a which says like this there came to us the proclamation that allah's messenger said allah's messenger have granted you permission to benefit yourself in the contract of temporary marriage with women there are multiple examples of it i'll give you one practical example where muhammad sahabis actually gave a cloth to a woman just cloth to a woman two guys went to the same woman and they gave clothes and they both enjoyed for a period of time sahih muslim 1406a 1406a and somebody can post it in the chat as well it will be helpful 1406a sahih muslim 1406a this is what it, go, it says sabra juhaini reported the allah's messenger permitted temporary marriage for us so i and another person went out and saw a woman of bana amir they, they these two guys are going and they saw a woman in banu adir banu, A, banu amir is a tribe so they saw a woman there who was like a young long-necked she camel so she she was beautiful and they are they are explaining that she was like a a young long-necked she camel we presented ourselves for to her uh, for contracting temporary marriage whereupon she said what dower will you give me so she is saying that okay i i'm ready for the temporary nikah but what what money will you give me what is it that you are going to give me as a dowry so i said my cloak so the one guy said i will give you my cloth my companion also said my cloth so both of these guys they want to have ding dong with this lady both of them they want to have sexual pleasure from this lady so both of them are saying we will both give you clothes what is happening look at this she 
when so when she looked at the clock of my companion she liked it so my and the my companions you know the the guy's companion's clock was better than his so she liked the compa the companion's clock so when she looked at the cloak of my companion she liked it and when she cast a glance at me i looked more attractive to her so now she wants to have that cloth of the companion and she liked this guy more because he was more attractive okay so i looked more attractive to her so then so she said well you and your cloaks are sufficient for me I remained with her for three nights and then Allah's messenger said he who had any such woman with whom he had temporary marriage he should let her off so this guy is saying that I stayed with this woman for three days so both of these guys they did had sexual intercourse with these women for how many days for three days and then later on for for that time period allah's messenger is saying now you have to let them go muhammad allowed for this nikah muta over and over and over again it is not just stopping there guys if you would be thinking that temporary nikah is just stopping only to the time of of war when their wives were not there they were paying to have sexual intercourse no you are highly mistaken when muslims they used to go for hajj when they used to go for hajj even then they used to have temporary nikah muhammad told them to have temporary nikah even when they were going for hajj muslims were asked by muhammad to pay women and have sexual intercourse with them even while they were doing hajj now usually the what do the muslims do they come up and say that oh muslims um, you know uh, hajj is a very beautiful time of the of the life uh, hajj is a very very important period of our time we keep ourselves very pure we keep ourselves very decent we did not perform in any kind of um, you know illegal activities and things like that no it is a big fat lie I will give you the source for that even while during the hajj muhammad and his companions used to do nikah muta now this is the example that i'm going to present to you this is from al musnad ahmad 432 okay 432 al musnad ahmad 432 you can see i am pasting it in the chat box so that you can take the take the reference okay um al musnad ahmad 432 look at what does it say it says it was narrated that qatada said abdullah bin shakik said uthman used to forbid muta of hajj i e tamatu uthman used to forbid muta of hajj i e tamatu and ali used to enjoy it <laughs> while doing hajj ali used to enjoy muta imagine these guys are going for hajj they are going to circumvent the kaaba and then they are paying women to have sexual intercourse with them these are not our sources these are muslim sources while doing during hajj also they used to have sexual intercourse with women by paying them what kind of a filthy religion is this so ali said you know that we did tamatu when messenger of with messenger of allah so he is saying that with messenger of allah we used to pay women and we used to have sexual intercourse with them so muhammad also used to do this 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 disgusting prophet of islam they used to do it he said yes but we were in a state of fear then is saying that yeah we used to do it with with muhammad but we were in a state of fear so this is one example now i'll give you one more example this is from this is from um uh from um uh, sahih al bukhari this is not from any other source but this is from sahih al bukhari okay please save these sources because it will be useful for you when you are having a discussion with a muslim 
because what happens is when you show these sources the muslims they don't have any option but they have to run away from you so i'll give you my sources from sahih al-bukhari 1688 it says like this i asked ibn Ab abbas about hajj al-tamatu so abu jumar uh, jumra is asking ibn abbas that you know did you guys used to do hajj al-tamatu means ha um, temporary nikah during hajj he ordered me to perform it so ibn abbas the ink of the ummah the the cousin of muhammad is saying that you go and do it <laughs> you go and have perform temporary sex during hajj i asked him about the hadi the sacrifice so hadi means the the animal that is there for the sacrifice during the hajj so he 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 said uh, i asked him about the hadi he said you have to slaughter a camel a cow or a sheep or you may share the hadi with others it seemed that some people disliked it hajjal tamatu i slept and dreamt as if a person was announcing hajj mabrur and accepted muta hajjal tamatu i went to ibn abbas and narrated it to him he said allah is greater the tradition of abu al qasim the prophet narrated shuba the call in the dream was and accepted umrah al hajj mabrur so you see even during hajj even during the time of hajj the muslims used to pay women and have sex with them what kind of a filthy religion is this what kind of a disgusting horrible religion is this where even to the holiest of the performance that they used to do during hajj they used to perform they used to perform tam hajj tamatu temporary sex so please muslim brothers and sisters if you want to discuss this please come up and have a discussion we are here to have a decent discussion with you but you have to give us proofs Yes, Satya brother or gentle brother, you guys want to add something, you can please add. If you, if any any people who are there in the audience you want to you want to ask any questions, please go ahead and ask. You know, you can ask questions like, oh, usually the Muslims say that, you know, um uh Nikah Mutta is banned, then how are you saying that Nikah Mutta is allowed? Yes, Umar who banned it? It is Umar who said that Nikah Mutta should be banned. Who is Umar? Umar is not a prophet. You have to show a verse from the Quran that shows, that proves that the Surah 4 verse 24 is abrogated. You have to bring up a proof from the Quran that proves that Surah 4 verse 24 is abrogated. It is not abrogated. So Muslims, you are more than welcome. Salam al masih Tony, brother. God bless you. God bless you as well, brother Nazarenes. God bless you, brother. So we were discussing about Nikah Mutta. We have given sources from the Shia sources as well as the Sunni sources that Nikah Mutta is allowed. We... Nikah Mutta, is that what yes. you said? Yes, temporary oh. sex. Yeah. Yes, Gross. temporary sex. Yeah, we have discussed about how Muhammad and his Sahabas used to do it during Hajj. And Muhammad forced his Sahabas to do it during Hajj even. During Hajj. And there are sources oh, no. which says, yeah, even during Hajj, Muhammad forced his Sahabas to do Nikah Muta. And even the Muslims, the Sahabas are saying, shall we have our male private parts dripping with semen while we are doing the ikram, while we are doing okay, the Okay, that's going to make me puke. Yeah. Yeah, so it is it is purely disgusting and Muslims are, are running away from this room. They are not even entering this room. Please ping your Muslim friends who are there in your list ask them to come forward and have a decent discussion we are here to have a discussion with them yeah i don't have any muslim friends on here i know of muslims on here but i can't ping them at the moment <laughs> yeah 
So yeah, Muslims, you are more than welcome to come in and you are more than welcome to discuss this particular topic with us. We are here to discuss with us. We are giving you n number of references. All of the references are pasted in the chat box. We have given you references in the in the you know in the room above. So please. Muslims, come up and discuss why is it that your filthy prophet is allowing to have sexual intercourse with women by paying money? How can right. you say Brother that Masri. Islam is a good religion? So Muslims, you are welcome to come up, please. Go ahead. Yeah, go Brother, Brother Nazreen, I, I, would, I, I would like to correct you. It's not Muhammad who permitted it. It is Allah uh, who is not Muhammad. It is Allah who has permitted it, right? Absolutely, yes. In in Quran, fifty third chapter, verses three and four, ayah number three to four, chapter number surah number fifty three, verse number the other ayah number is three and four. I read it for you. No, does he? speak out of his desire whatever he says is nothing but a revelation that is revealed this is about muhammad and allah says the same in 53rd surah third and fourth ayah so if allah permits you to have a temporary marriage for three days or two days or a day or for one time after paying a certain amount of money or a certain amount, a certain gift for enjoying her private parts, what would you call that God? The chat box is open. Please name please give a good name to those person to that particular person who allows you to have sex with a woman after paying little money or a gift what would you call such a person you name it does him. not necessarily brother gentle it does not necessarily have to be money a muslim can give his socks a Muslim can give his underwear, a Muslim can give his, his uh, t-shirt as a mahar and, and sleep with this woman for one day, two day, three days or maybe two hours. That is nikah mutta. Allah, has, Allah scenario, subhanahu wa ta'ala has Allah. Brother, In worst case scenario, if you have nothing on you, you can just read one or two ayah from Quran in return. Is that true? Oh yes, in the worst case scenario, if you don't have money with you, then Muhammad even allowed people to recite a Quran and that will be a mahar for this lady. This man is doing ding dong with this lady. He is having sexual intercourse with this lady. A Muslim man is having sexual intercourse with this lady and then reciting an ayah for her. That is enough. And then she will go at her, her own house and he can go to her own um, his own house. That's enough. This is disgusting, guys. Muslims, why are you not ashamed of your own prophet? And why are you not ashamed of Allah? We can share for multiple sources if you need, but please, guys, come up. Do you also and know... Also friends in the audience, please share this room, please, so that your friends can see the room and come to this room for discussion, please. Yes, you, please yes. only 23. Room, uh, there are more than 49 people who are there in the room. Please, guys, share this room and give a good title. Why is Allah behaving like a pimp? Or something like that. Give give it a room title. Uh, give a give a sharing description. Like why is Muhammad allowing prostitution in Surah 4 verse 24? Please write a, a good description and share the room. If you do not know how to share the room, then in the bottom of your screen you can see a scissor. 
on to the left of the scissor you can three you can see three dots which are connected by two lines click on that and you can see share on clubhouse and there will be a, a hand like a thing you can share it and people will know about it so please share the room and let others also reach it if there are any muslim friends then please send the room link to them so that they can join in and ask them why is allah behaving like a pimp yeah if you guys have any questions please right. come i have up. a doubt on this yes i have a doubt how many musa marriages can a muslim do at a certain point of time at the same time Wait, how many what how many musa marriages can a muslim how many marriages how many muslim marriages can they do no musa marriages how musa many nikah muta how many nikah muta temporary nikah muta Yeah, I wanted to say there are no restrictions. You can keep how many ever. How would you say that? You can keep 10, 15 or even 100 maybe nikamata contracts, right? If you if you can just pay money, you can keep as many women as you want. about like uh from what i could tell from what i found uh, uh about three or four times apparently or this could be a bad source so i'm not sure no yeah can not marry more than a woman cannot marry more than three or four times according to this to when it comes to nikamuta the men that nikamuta is a temporary marriage uh, brother no, 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 no. that's not right which source is that there are no restrictions ever mentioned in quran oh, about my dad, yeah, it's wikipedia right. it's wikipedia never mind forget that that's just wikipedia right there is not even a single verse in quran restricting restricting the number of nikah muta you can have how many ever you can afford Astaghfirullah. Oh my gosh, it can't this can't be for oh my gosh. Again, um I need to know what the heck was going on through Momo's brain during that time. why are my messages are not posted am i being blocked or reported uh, can you guys uh, are, are you guys allowed to post messages in the room I'm not permitted. I don't know why. It says something is wrong. Hello, am I audible?
Hey, gentle brother, can you hear me? Hello? Yeah, if there are if there are any brothers who want to join in and you want to come up and share your thoughts about this particular topic, then you can come up and uh, we can have a discussion. If you have any questions also, you can come up and we can have a discussion about this topic. Um, General brother, I have shared um, uh, the, the whole presentation with you. Um, you can have a n number of uh, examples and all of the hadiths that are there, uh, the rulings, the fatwas, and everything is there in that particular presentation. So the question remains, why is it that the Muslims are, why is it that Allah is allowing to be like a good pimp? Why is he allowing Muslims to have, a, you know, uh, have, a, you know, intercourse with women by paying money? That is the question. I'm not sure if I am audible. Can can somebody please respond? Am I audible in the... Yes, you are. In the meantime, in the interim, I got booted out and I just joined back now. So, yeah, you are audible, yes. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I was just having my um, lunch, so I didn't have my lunch yet. That's why I have shared the references, Satya brother. If you want, you can go ahead and check that references. You will, ha you will get a lot of uh, good information uh, in that particular uh, reference. I, I just saw your message. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got logged out. Uh, but anybody who want to join in to the panel, you want to have discussion, you can. But Satya brother, I have shared the the whole, um, you know. Oh uh, yeah, I just have seen that now. Yeah, I just have seen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I will have a look. Yeah. Hey, brother Ding. God bless you. If you're free, you can also join in. I know that there is a there is somebody saying that we, there is some kind of an issue in the clubhouse that is going on, but I'm not sure what it is. But yeah, I can. Yeah, I was hear. booted out and I just got, just got in, got back in. So I can see GK brother has raised the hands and I accepted your invitation. So your your request. So please come to the speakers panel, please. GK brother. Hi, hello. Good. Uh, praise the Lord. How are you guys doing? Praise the Lord, yes. Praise. Yeah, yeah, there was an interruption a couple of minutes ago, so I was out of the room. <clears throat> okay, so the Nikamuta, like uh, I heard that uh, it's only practiced by Shia sect, and uh, Sunni sect is uh, totally disapproving or not at all, uh, you know, accepting or approving that. And you guys know that uh, in, in uh, our state, like uh, uh, like years before, uh, there was Arabi marriages, like people from uh, uh, from Arabian countries come and and marry with the uh, with the women in in our state. So it should be considered as a nikamuta. Is that right? Gentle brother or Nasim brother, may I answer that question, please? Because I heard about it, but I'm not sure um, whether we could call it as Mutanika. But I heard about this Arabic marriage. Uh, these Arabic people, the people from the Middle yeah. East, come and Almost marry same. young children. Almost the same, yeah. They used to do that when they visit India or Kerala. Uh, and that's how you have the... Uh, a particular kind of a group that even uh, came up in the south part of the uh, land of India and in the uh, in the western countries as well they came and did the same thing um, there was temporary marriages happening when they come for business uh, things of that code but during the Arab trade route uh, through the silk routes of Arabia so we do have um, certain writings on that of having temporary marriages 
I can post the link of the same, like uh, Samuel Logan's uh, Malabar Manual is a good example of that. Thank you. Yeah, but it is also happening recently too. I have read in, in the newspapers that it is going on in Hyderabad area. It, it does happen. Like, it does happen everywhere, not just in Hyderabad. It happens um, across uh, the land and also in Bangladesh and also in Pakistan and many other places. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is also happening in the Western countries too, you know, when the like uh, immigrants and refugees, they are coming in West and uh, they are doing the same practice uh, among themselves. It's pretty much common. But after the marriage, are these people uh, uh, get divorced or do they keep them forever, like one of their wives? They keep uh, they keep uh, all the wives, but and they, they, they come keep... here, have a relationship, they leave them with a big amount of money, and then they leave. In the olden times, there were many, many children who never knew who their father was. No, they, they, they do the marriage and they keep uh, these uh, women in separate uh, houses, like, you know, not with their, uh, like their family, like their original family, but they keep these women in separate uh, apartments or houses. And uh, I don't know if the authorities are knowing about that or not, but uh, it is happening. There are a lot of, uh, but it is pretty much, uh, you know, you cannot do that in the West. Like it is like an illegal relationship and there could be uh, uh, like various consequences related to that because, you know, like the insurance claims like that. So, the, so they are, they are pretty much, they are hiding uh, this relation from the authorities. So, yeah, it is happening here too. So brothers and sisters, anybody from uh, the, uh, the audience can come up and speak. And uh, Brother Neymar hasn't spoken. Uh, if you have anything to, do, to share with us, please, Brother Neymar. Yeah, me? Praise the Lord, brothers. Ah, praise the Lord, yeah, brother, please. Yeah, yeah. Brothers, just, uh, I just want to know, this Muttanika having any Mm, which means uh, having any duration limited, limit, uh, limited duration, how or not it. Just I want to know about that one. Because uh, Mr. Nasrin told it is three days contract. Okay, if uh, some of the people want to stay with three more days, okay, it will it, uh, have any other, uh, uh, which means uh, I just want to know about the duration. Okay, if they are, they are having with the sexual uh, practices more, three more, Three more days, okay, what will happen? Just I want to know. They have. Did you get it, brother? I think only gentle brother. Yeah, 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 we heard, yes. Gentle brother or Nasi must be able to answer that. I don't know about the duration of the, the panic. There are, if anybody there, has... there are uh, no restrictions on that. Uh, you can keep Mutha marriage for how many ever long days you want because uh, it depends on uh, uh, how that uh, reward from you uh, matters. Of course, you can keep this Nikamata for a week, 15 days, or three days, or it can be a one time contract as well. So it depends on uh, your desire. It's not women's desire, it's your desire as long as you want to. But the question I think I think what he meant was, if that duration extends, yeah, brother, the think, person yeah, has to pay sorry. more for the du that, that that extended period. Yeah, exactly. Yes, exactly. Brother, what yes. I have understood. 
general brother what i have understood is that you know um, based on that quran verse also that both of you mutually agree so if the if the woman agrees that the, she wants to stay for three more days with the man if the man is willing to pay more then they can extend it like you know it has to be a mutual kind of a thing i i nasim and brother um uh, i don't see even a single reference of a particular day or time period in the quran for nikah muta no there are no references of the time period it is just that Absolutely, you know the, yes. the 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 hadiths that that we can see muhammad actually yeah. uh, they did it for three days fine. and then muhammad yeah, yeah in yeah. quran there is no word, there is no time limit as Absolutely, whatever yes. the woman and the and the guy decides so uh to answer you brother jam if if the woman is okay to stay with this man for three more days if the man is okay to pay money then they can stay you know for three more days if the brother has if, they, if she I have said no, a doubt on it i have a doubt on it where do you see the permission of women is needed for nikah mota in the quran no um see the if you read that particular passage carefully brother you can see that um i will i will read that portion again it will says so with those among whom you have enjoyed give them their required due but if you agree mutually after the requirement has been determined there is no sin on you so if but if you, you agree see? mutually to give more so there has to be a mutual yeah, agreement yeah. that is after having sexual intercourse right yeah after or after you have enjoyed pleasure from them so you pay them yeah. you know and and these muslims they actually used to do that they used to they used to stay with they tell a woman um that you know we want to stay with you for 3 days but they would extend the time period so these women used to come to muhammad and cry and then muhammad would say that okay you know if you had the contract for for this one it um, period of time then you will let them go uh, there are actually hadiths that are there i can i can find the sources the the source that i have the pdf that i have shared with you it has the links of all of that okay thank you brother and uh, i have another one question also okay if during the nikah mota the some of the lady will go into the Uh, pregnancy okay what will happen for that baby just uh, i want to know uh the man okay. has to the man has to bear you know the responsibility for that child for for the um you know because it is actually a, a nikah so the man, it it officially would become his child so the man has to take responsibility for that child in terms of of raising that child and things like that there there is actually under the sharia there is um, you know um uh, there is actually a, what do you say mm, there is obligatory yes yes you have to you have to provide for for that child it is there in the sharia but you know um, i haven't done much studies about the about the details of like you know um, what what sort of responsibilities fall on the man but yes he has to consider this child as his own because there is a a, a contract of nikah mutta nikah that has happened so you cannot just say that oh, but, uh, no, but, no, no, but no, this is i heard uh, brother nasreen i heard that a man who has a girl child and if she like uh, he can this man the father of this girl can do nikah with this girl that because is, this girl that is born there. that is that is when this man is having intercourse with this lady out of wedlock like out of nikah so there is like a fornication like a, a, a man has a girlfriend now there is no there is no contract of nikah mutta there is no nikah that has been done now the girl is pregnant so if she, if she has a child a girl child then this man can have sex with her so that's a different scenario altogether this is a particular different scenario where there is a nikah mutta so they had they oh, okay. got involved in a contract thank you yeah So, brother Jam, if you, uh, I know Lloyd De Jong has done a lot of uh, studies on uh, on the Sharia of all the in the detail about Sharia, and if uh, Lloyd is available, 
you know in i know he is in clubhouse and brother neymar is a good friend of his um, and if we get lloyd jong we will be able to get, you know get a lot of answers from that uh, i have a book uh, which details of the you know how the sharia law works and all of that which brother yesterday shared um i can check into that book it gives it you know you have to go more deeper into studying what all responsibilities the man has to take and so on and so forth but i know for a fact the man has to take the responsibility of of the expenses uh, that the woman has to bear for giving birth to this child that's there okay thank you bro but at the end of the day the 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 evil in this particular relationship with the, is that it is evil that it is purely prostitution then why is allah allowing for prostitution based on this particular reference surah 424 we have shared n number of hadiths which are there which gives a straight away you know reference to prostitution So why so is the difference not coming? Violation of the commandments of the sixth commandment, isn't it? Thou, thou shall not commit adultery. So it is a direct violation of this um, Mosaic law. Exactly. Uh, uh, exactly, bro. brother. Exactly that. It is a direct violation of the Mosaic law, where where God Himself is telling Moses that thou shall not commit adultery. So this is a direct violation because they are paying money. to a woman for certain period of time having sex with them and then later on letting them go so you can see that our lord and savior jesus christ he when he instructed he said if you look at a woman with lustful eyes you have already committed adultery in your heart so that is the highest of the standard that is been given to us that you should not even look at a woman with lust and then you know um, the, the the information that we are getting from islam is that they can pay women and have sex with them and all of this nonsense which is there this is why we say that islam is purely demonic the shias are still doing this nikamuta they are very open about it they say that allah has allowed for it so why should we hesitate but the sunnis they are ashamed about it they are ashamed of their own Allah and that is why they don't want to perform it but they say that uh, they said they they do misyar misyar is same misyar nikah is also same as nikah mutta what they do is um, they will have a family already with um, wife and kids and all of that then they will have nikah with another lady and they will not uh they don't have to take responsibility of that lady but they will ask that lady to stay in her own house and this guy will visit her house and have intercourse with her whenever he please and then he go back to his house so you can search misyar misyar is done by sunnis and muta is done by the shias but it is not abrogated because the quran is still standing Yeah, thank you, brother. But I then, have, but oh, then, okay, okay, Jam, brother, continue. No, no, no. I just want to know. Okay, who is conducting this nikah mutta contract, and uh, they have any written documents? Let me know that one. From what I have understood is that uh, you know the ma- the man and the woman they come. and they agree for this contract and uh, there would be a kazi or somebody like that who would uh, you know do it i have i have uh, shared the link about uh, of all of the details you know how it is been done in the shia um, let me just go into that let's all go into this particular link that is shared about um, and you can understand how this thing is been done in detail yeah okay. thank you bro uh, yeah this is from alislam.org alislam.org and uh, you know the a lady called uh, sachiko murata sachiko murata has done a detailed explanation she has written this article and it has been published by a shia site one of the most prominent shia site alislam.org um you can see she has been referring to surah 4 on the top itself and then you can see that um mm, you know um uh, she is also men- giving references of sunni jurisprudences she is giving the shia ju- jurisprudences um, 
she's saying that since it is a contract, Muta requires a declaration and an acceptance. So there has to be a declaration that the man is man and woman is declaring, and there has to be an acceptance. The woman has to accept the contract. Since it is a contract, it has to be declared and it has to be accepted. As in permanent marriage, the declaration is prerequisite of the woman. It must consist of one of the three Arabic formulas. The same three which are employed by the Shias in permanent marriage. Al Sayyid Al Murtad is said to have added that a slave girl may employ the formula, I have allowed you or I have considered you lawful by his words have not been confirmed by others. So the woman has to say either I have allowed you or the woman has to say I have considered you lawful and then the muta gets established. Al Shahid Al Tahlan uh, Tahani writes to me it seems more correct to limit ourselves to the first three phrases apparently there is no disagreement on the point that the woman may not employ expression like i have given you permission i have given you as a gift i have rented to you or i have lent to you the acceptance is made by the man after the woman had made her declaration. So, woman is the one who is declaring, saying that I have allowed you. And the man is accepting that declaration. So, the acceptance is made by man. After the woman has made her declaration, his words must demonstrate that he is satisfied with the declaration. For example, he may say, I will accept the marriage or I accept the mutta. If he should say only I accept or I am satisfied, the contract is valid. The declaration should proceed. The acceptance is not a condition of the contract since a contract consists of declaration and acceptance in whatever order the two may occur. So it does not matter whether the man says first or the woman says first, whichever order it may be, it is okay. It is claimed that there is a consensus on this point. Al-Muhaki Al-Halil states explicitly that if the man says, I have married you, and then the woman says the same thing to him, the contract is sound. See, the contract is sound. The contract is okay. So the man has to give um, his acceptance and the woman has to give her permission. She has to declare it. And that is how this whole contract is going on. So we know that, you know, this is what happens in prostitution. In prost prostitution, the man is going to a brothel. He is saying, the woman, I need you and I will pay you this much amount. And then the woman agrees. She says, yes, I have allowed you. And then they go and they, they have intercourse with so you look at this, you know, each and every point is well detailed mentioned in this particular article. The four pillars of Muta. Please save it and use it so in your next conversation with somebody. The brother Jam, I'm hoping that, you know, um, this particular link will be very useful in terms of your studies, in terms of talking with Muslims. You know, Muslims cannot reject it. The, Shia, the Sunnis cannot reject it because they cannot prove one single ayah from the Quran which abrogates Surah 4 verse 24. I do not see any Muslim friends coming up. We we want our Muslim friends to come up, but they are not coming up. Uh, brother Tony or GK, Satya brother, do you want to add something or comment? You can. No, in relation uh, to we the... We have nothing to comment at the moment. Uh, sorry, go on. No, you can go. I was just saying I have nothing to comment uh, on right now at the moment. I, I got nothing at the moment. Oh, no, no, I was just about to say about that uh, um, Misia Nika and Mutta Nika, both are evil, but uh, in the case of Misia Mutta, the, the Sunnis, they don't take any responsibility of the, neither the women, woman nor 
if any child is born. But I think the Mutanika is lesser of the evil. Both are evil, but I think lesser of the evil because as from what you said, if a child is born out of this this evil practice, at least they have they are they are legally liable to take the responsibility of looking after that child. So in that case, I think it is lesser of the evil. I thought of making a small observation on that in relation to this Muta Nikya. But uh, Mr. Amuta is just a man going to a woman and just enjoying the pleasure from her and just leaving her just like that. So I think that is even worse, the case scenario. Sunnis cannot really uh, say we are better than she is in this case. Thank you. Exactly, exactly, brother. Both are evil, but I think, you know, Nikamuta is still a lesser evil because at the end of the day that, uh, you know, this lady, um, she gets her freedom. She can go back home and like you do whatever she wants to. But both of them is prostitution. It's just a, a way of prostitution. And I, I'm not sure why our Muslim brothers are not coming up. I hope that they come up and they, they discuss with us, but they have not been coming up. So hopefully they listen to this room and we pray that God would open up their hearts and minds to know the true God uh, so that they would know who Jesus is and that they get saved. So thank you, brothers and sisters, for, for joining us. I know that there are people who have uh, uh, shared this room. There will be people who will be listening to this room uh, again. We have shared a lot of sources. Uh, please take those sources and use it for your arguments ahead. Tomorrow also we will take, take further on this particular discussion. And there are more sources that needs to be shared. There are more things that we can we can present in front of the world. So yeah, tomorrow also we will have this discussion. But thank you, thank you so much for on joining. The same, at the same time, at the same time tomorrow. Yes, yes, we will have it on the same time. Uh, by the time that we close down on our um, our Malayalam room, we will have this English room started off with. That's great. Yes, wonderful. Thank you. Thank you for the time. Thank you. Thank you, Satya brother. Thank, thank you, Jam brother. Thank you, GK. Thank you, Neymar. Thank you. Th thank you, Tony bro. And all of the all of those who are there in the audience, thank you for your support. You know, God bless you all. Three. You're welcome. Three. Three. Uh, Three. Uh, Three. Three. And if there's still anybody who doesn't know, I'm starting my room this Saturday, so give me a follow if you all want to learn about the plagiarization of Islam. It's starting this Saturday. Okay, okay, brother. God bless you all. Have a nice day. Thank you, thank you, brother Tony. God bless you all.